Welcome to the second edition of Letters from the Long Box, where I, Tebow, for Lords of the Long Box, along with Mikey Sun, answer all the uh, mailbag fan questions that you may have on Geekiosity or in the comments section of the Letters of the Long Box video we posted last week. So same rules apply for this week as well as I reach down and grab my notes. <laughs> uh, so basically after this video post, if you have a question for myself or Mikey Sutton, any questions regarding the DCEU, the MCU, Disney Plus, DC Universe, or anything comic book related as far as TV shows and movies, go ahead and leave your question below. And if we use your question next week, we'll not only give your name over the air, we'll also give you a Marvel no prize. We don't need your address because it's a no prize or maybe we will, we don't know. So. Let's get right to it, boys and girls. We got a little mix of everything this week. This is uh, some of these questions are from Gigosity, uh, the Facebook page that Mikey Sutton and his admins run as well. I'm on there as well. And also from Lords of the Long Box. And the first few questions are actually from the Lords of the Long Box. So shout out to you guys. Great job. Let's go right to it. First question is from Okinawa Jarhead, who asks, Hey, Mikey, if the JLA Snyder Cut goes as well or well received by audiences, does DC have plans to capitalize on this for more content for its fans? Thank you very much. Thank you, Okinawa Jarhead. Great question. Yes, they certainly do, answers Mikey. There is considerable amount of excitement at 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 and T to further Zack Snyder's vision of DC. Should he should the Snyder Cut become a huge success? Some of which will be revealed on the July Fourth Scoop Jam. You're going to hear that come up. <laughs> that answer is going to be uh, used quite a bit because uh, myself, Mikey Sutton, as well as some other big YouTube channels are going to be doing another scoop jam like we did on Mikey's birthday. And that is going to be on July 4th. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be big. All right. Next question comes from Jin Nodges. And I apologize if I butcher your name, but some of you don't have normal YouTube names on the, on the Facebook side. It's a little bit easier, but on the YouTube side, you got, got uh, some, uh, some weird secret names. I understand you want to keep your identity secret. Everybody's got a secret, you know, identity. I don't want to tell you mine. Mikey and TiVo, do you think the ghost will be back in the next installment of the Ant-Man franchise? Very easy question. Yes, it will be he or she. We don't know, but ghost is definitely coming back. So it's a great book to go out and get. Uh, next question from YouTube is RP. Hey, Lords, cheers from Toronto, Canada. Shout out to all our friends in the great North. My question is any news on Captain Marvel sequel or Miss Marvel? I believe it was teased as a Disney plus show before, but haven't heard anything since then. Has this been canceled or the century? Any idea on the quest? Uh, I guess the question is, or any idea on the casting for the century? Uh, we scooped the century all a while ago that Marvel's going to be working on that down the road. Miss Marvel is indeed coming to Disney Plus. Scoop from Mikey. I am hearing they are planning on having Brie Larson to guest appear on the Miss Marvel show, kind of to bridge the uh, the the bridge the two generations between Miss Marvel and Captain Marvel. So there you go. That's an actual scoop on here. So you just got that. All right. Our next question is coming from our friend from down under, Errol Molnar asks. Tebow, can you ask Mikey the million dollar question? Will Hugh Jackman ever reprise his role as Wolverine or will Marvel go into a different direction with another actor? And I think this, we've been talking about this as a common theme on our shows for a while. Um, when we first reported this with Mikey Sun and the Black Knight, Black Knight will be making a return very soon, by the way. Marvel Studios would love to bring back Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Jackman is conscious of his age and fact, and the fact that Logan is such and had a such such an iconic standoff you know what let me take a sip of my drink here let me sip of my cabossier right fast all right but there are always ways to give him opportunity to participate in the mcu without tarnishing that stay tuned for the july 4th scoop jam to find more about hugh jackman and wolverine's future so there you go i keep on telling you that july 4th scoop jam is going to keep on coming up as an answer uh danzig 1979 asks how likely is it that HBO Max will release the ire cut of the Suicide Squad? So after the success of the Snyder Cut campaign and it got released on the HBO Max, I, and we always say, be careful what you wish for. I hope it comes out well. Uh, there's been cries for an ire cut. The, ir the irony of that and ire kind of sounds the same is when David Iyer first came out with Suicide Squad, he was adamant in saying, nope, this is my cut. This is my director's vision. And this is what it is. If a movie, if people don't like it, it's all on me. Well, he's changed that. And so has Warner Brothers and AT&T. And yes, bank on it. There will be an Iyer's cut. Any way for them to get more subscribers over to HBO Max? There's been some con contrivacy lately 
about the HBO Max stuff. I don't want to get into it too much, but everybody thought that the um, HBO Max had full control of all their properties. Well, guess what? Starting July 1st, uh, most of the DC films are going to be off, meaning that they're due to historical contracts and grandfather clauses. They have to release these movies so they can appear on other platforms such as Amazon Prime or Netflix or whatever, what have you. Uh, so that was one they never disclosed to people who were going to sign up for HBO Max. So it should be interesting uh, what's left with that. They also pulled um, Gone with the Wind because of the all the... Uh, the controversy with it right now, obviously, you know, the, uh, if you ever seen, if, if, you, if you haven't seen Gone of the Wind lately, it, <laughs> it has not aged well, but it's a, it's a, it's a historical film. So what they're going to do is they're going to re-release it uh, and w in context, meaning that they're going to probably, they're going to have a little uh, QA session right before to say where it's places in the historical context. And I think if you agree or disagree with what the film kind of glamorizes slavery, it's important as a piece of history to see how we as a nation thought of those subjects that are very, very sensitive right now. But in the 30s and 40s, it was kind of you do whatever you want. Blackface, minstrels, singing thing, troops. It was very, very widely used in Hollywood at the time. And uh, um, what you want to say, uh, the kind of. The singing and dancing of African Americans back then it was very played up a lot. It wasn't very, uh, I guess the kids would say, woke back then. It wasn't until Sidney Poitier came out in the movies uh, in the '60s and really kind of put, you know, uh, would guess who's coming to dinner. I guess is the really big first Hollywood film that kind of puts it into place where uh, Sidney Poitier was dating a white woman, which was unheard of at Hollywood at the time. So that just goes, and that was like 30 years after Gone with the Wind. So it just goes there. So it's neither here nor there, but it's interesting what HBO Max is doing right now. So I don't want to get too much into the politics of it because I'm tired of politics right now, to be honest with you. Okay, and that is oh one more. Uh, right now for our YouTube. So this is from coming from Jam Sessions on YouTube. Any word on the villains who are going to be used on Moon Knight? Hmm. Uh, of course, the Lords, along with Black Knight, Mikey Sutton scooped that Stained Glass Scarlet uh, was going to be used as a villain on uh, the Moon Knight series. He also said Morpheus. We also said some other characters. So long, I don't forget. But Stained Glass Scarlet was trending after a while. We'll have to re-report it. And some other places ran with it. And people started buying it up. So don't. So uh, we'll have more on that on July 4th. Yes, you see the trend here. So we're going to go in-depth on Moon Knight on July 4th uh, with a more detailed scoop jam. So stay tuned for that. So we're going to lot. On the Lord's channel, we have long-term spec lists on the next two Wednesdays. And then on July 4th, we're going to have a huge MCU scoop jam. And hopefully that'll lead right into San Diego Comic-Con, which is going to be a virtual Comic-Con uh, July 22nd through the 24th, which is my birthday, July 24th. So appreciate any gifts you guys want to give me. <laughs> All right. So these are questions from Geekosity. Let's go over these. Congratulations to everybody who uh, just posed some great questions from Mikey to choose from. It was very difficult. That we had uh, 30 questions on um, YouTube on the last video, and we had like 50, 60 questions to Geekosity. We pared them down to like 10. Uh, so that's really good, guys. Great job. Uh, these are questions from the Geekosity Facebook page. Chad Crow asks, well, sent to be, be part of the MCU in the next five years. Uh, from what Mike has been told, most likely it's being planned when he, where he falls in. We don't know, but you can bank on it to start buying those first appearances of the century. He's coming. It's just a matter of time. And hopefully during San Diego Comic-Con, they'll start releasing more of these dates because I'm there's a backlog of information that's just been sitting there that uh, I'm, Feige is sitting on a ton of information. I can't wait till he comes out with it. Okay. Nick Taylor asks, is Doctor Strange, Doctor Doom team up movie still going to happen? Yes. Doctor Strange part three right now is being discussed by the folks over Marvel to be Triumph and Torment, which we've talked about a lot on this channel. And it's a great, great uh, one shot graphic novel uh, that features Doctor Doom and Doctor Strange. And it's essentially Doctor Doom wants to take his mother's soul back from Mephisto and he enlists the help of Doctor Strange. This is Doctor Doom. At the height of his, oh, look at that. I just got a message from Mikey right now. <laughs> uh, at the height of his sorcery powers, if you don't know, Dr. Doom is a, this kind of unique being that does both science and sorcery. So enlist the aid of Dr. Strange and, there's, and these limited time allies. So it's a great story. Go peep it out if you haven't read it. Triumph and Torment. All right. Next up on the list is Brody Marshall asks, 
Will Disney Marvel change their plans to have the TV actors come back in their respective roles like Charlie Cox as Daredevil and John Bernthal as Punisher instead of casting new actors? Very good question. There are no plans to replace either Charlie Cox or John Bernthal at this moment. Uh, play Daredevil and Punisher, respectively. Rage bait from comic sites will lead you to believe that Kevin Feige is the Grim Reaper of casting with both Deadpool and J. Jonas Jameson being played by the same actors. It proves that is not the case at all. Feige is going to get in the way... Feige isn't going to get in the way of what was successful. For example, Patrick Stewart publicly revealed that he met with Feige about returning as Charles Xavier. Remember that? And there's no truth in the rumor that uh, they are changing the ethnic race of Magneto and Charles Xavier. That rumor that was cast out, that made no sense at all. Um, but it's just people just bored during quarantine making up articles. To be honest with you, that rumor started before the quarantine uh, from dubious sources. So anyway... Let's get to the next question from our friends from Geekosity. Kobe, sorry if I say your name incorrectly. Kobe Christie or Christ. <laughs> C-R-I-S-T-E. Sounds like Christ to me, but we'll just go with Christie. Well, they start releasing movies like Black, or Black, Black Widow to Disney Plus if theaters don't open up back soon. If only if Galactus shows up and starts eating the planet, they will wait till to see if the Herald destroys any major city before that happens. So what he's saying is no way in hell that Black Widow will be released on streaming. They will push it back, 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 just like Wonder Woman 84 until theaters are close to full capacity. They are no rush because they don't want to lose uh, a ton of money. Artemis Files a little bit different and some of the reviews are already coming back because the, it was created by Fox and distributed by Disney and some of the reviews have been lackluster. That's not a giant uh, Disney Studios film, Marvel Studios film, Black Widow is. The amount of money that's been put into the production, the paying of the actors, uh, the marketing distribution, everything that started before the quarantine, they have way too much vested in this movie and they need to get some type of ROI on it, which means return on investment. So there you go. Most chances are slim and none and uh, slim lives in Texas. You know, if you ever heard that saying. So yes, expect Black Widow to be out in the theaters. And on that note, in California, theaters can start opening on July 1st with limited capacity. So we are starting to get things going. The first major movie release that was supposed to be in July is Tenet, the Christopher Nolan film. So that'd be a good uh, kind of gauging to see how things are going right now. I think Tenant maybe pushed back a month. That's my own guess because theaters are slowly reopening now. If they don't open soon, AMC is going to go out of business. So uh, we need to support our movie theaters right now. And I love AMC theaters. A comfortable Dolby Theater is one of the best movie seeing experiences you can have. All right. Th thank you uh, for that question from Kobe Christie. Next up is from Daniel Kimber. Kimber. Just kidding. Gentlemen, you receive many scoops and inside information. And some of this is shared kindly with the group. How do you decide what should be shared and what not to share? For example, the outcome of Endgame. Hmm. Okay. Micah says, I will always ask my sources, can I release this now? If not, when? Many times I even hide information from TiVo. Scoop, for example, I haven't even told TiVo that they've discussed having Charlie Cox's Daredevil meet Moon Knight on season two of his Disney show. I just read that now. I didn't even know that was it. So there you go. So Micah just dropped one on me too. So there you go. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy that. You know what? I should probably read these in advance. So I'm not like surprised at it, but you know what? I've been busy. My dog just got hurt earlier. So I wasn't even come on here and I think I had to take him to the vet. Uh, my old dog is 15 years old. He tried to jump on the couch. He fell on his back and then hit the side of his face on the table. And I was like, uh, anyway hope he's doing lord vader will be strong though he'll keep going and going so i uh, appreciate you guys after this video post if you have a question about the mcu or dceu or the cw or disney plus anything with the marvels even some star wars questions post a post your question in the comment below and then uh, next week if you get choose we'll read your question on air and then hopefully these keep on going and going so from Letters of the Long Box and Geek Ostney and Mikey Sutton and Lords of the Long Box, thanks for joining us. And as always, boys and girls, keep digging in them long boxes. Peace out.